Back in the 90s, Megadeth was one of the few bands that survived the grunge years. Many bands that were once popular, such as Motley Crue and Def Leppard, they were no longer topping the charts. In came bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, and Soundgarden, and the words alternative and grunge became the new buzzwords. This was at the start of the decade. But then Metallica released the Black Album, which is the best-selling heavy metal album of all time. But Megadeth was right behind them back then. I guess Dave Mustaine never got over getting kicked out of Metallica because it looks like he wanted to take his band to the same heights that Metallica were reaching back in the early 90s. So let's explore this a little. Megadeth had always had an underground following, but they started to go mainstream towards the late 80s. One example of this is being them being exposed to a wider audience when they covered No More Mr. Nice Guy uh, for that really cheesy Wes Craven horror movie soundtrack called Shocker that was back in 1989. Then they released their masterpiece album, Rust in Peace, that had some awesome tracks like Holy Wars, The Punishment Due. They had their best lineup back then. It was Dave Mustaine, Dave Ellison, Nick Menza, and Marty Friedman. Rust in Peace was a thrash masterpiece, or let's just say thrashterpiece, and their most critically acclaimed album. But it was uh, far from a commercial album. It had complex arrangements, lots of fast-paced rhythms, but despite this, they received the Grammy nomination in 1991 for Best Metal Performance, but they didn't win. So then grunge happened, and the Black Album happened, so Megadeth thought to themselves, uh, we have to make an album that can both fit into this new musical landscape, but at the same time, be thrashy enough so as not to piss off their core fans. And I think they pulled it off with Countdown to Extinction. It was a popular album. It entered the Billboard charts at number two. It was certified double platinum in the United States. It's also nominated for a Grammy, but didn't win. Now, at this point in time, Megadeth is one of the biggest metal bands of the early 90s. They were just competing with Metallica and Pantera for that top spot. They continued to release songs for movie soundtracks, such as The Last Action Hero, they had a song on the Beavis and Butthead experience. That was one of those weird <laughs> compilation albums that came out in the 90s. And they had a spot on the Black Sabbath tribute album called Nativity in Black with the cover of Paranoid. And that landed them another Grammy nomination. Now, by the way, with all these Grammy, nation, Grammy nominations, you may be wondering, uh, did they actually win? Yes, they won in 2016 with Dystopia, where they were brought to the stage while the band played Master of Puppets. The Grammy goes to Dystopia Megadeth. Yes! But back to the main video. You're probably wondering uh, when am I going to start talking about euthanasia, which is the main topic of the video. Well, I'm building to that because after all the success, they had to ask themselves, what do we do now? Euthanasia is one of those divisive albums. I'll be honest with you. I went out and bought it on CD when it came out. But for some reason, I couldn't get into the album. So for years, I didn't like the album that much. There was something about it that didn't grab me. But now years later, it has grown on me. I've heard other YouTube channels talk about the album. There were a few channels who say that it's one of their favorite albums by the band. And others who say they hated the album. I put a poll on my community tab asking all your opinion on the album. I'll talk about the results uh, towards the end of the video. But let's talk about why this album is so divisive. I think one big factor in making this album so divisive is that it was the band's attempt to go into the mainstream. It was 1994. Metallica had not released a follow-up to the Black Album as of yet. So Megadeth was thinking now would be the perfect time to steal their thunder. So they put out an album that didn't have the same level of angry thrash as some of the previous albums, but at the same time, the songs had catchy choruses and the vocals were much cleaner. But it wasn't a complete abandonment of their sound like they did years later with Risk from 1999. It was just a slightly different sounding Megadeth album. So right off the bat, some fans are going to think, I don't like this, it's slow, it's not thrash, it's not angry. But the problem is, is that many people didn't take the time to analyze all the good stuff that was put into this album. So basically, it was more of a hard rock or a traditional heavy metal album in terms of production. The guitars and vocals were at the forefront. The bass guitar could be heard very well. The drums were mixed a little low, but Nick Menza is a great drummer. You can still hear his awesome drum fills. I think it's a type of album that doesn't have any tracks that really stand out amongst the others. But at the same time, it's one of the best Megadeth albums to listen to 
you're looking for songs that never got overplayed with the metal radio stations or Spotify playlists, you don't seem to find many uh, euthanasia songs on a typical Megadeth playlist. So I would say it's a type of album you can enjoy from start to finish. It's kind of a long album, but keep in mind it was the 90s. Bands tried to fit as many songs as they could on a single CD. And back then, vinyl was not that popular, but it was kind of long, but Metallica had much longer albums at that time. Let's talk about the songs. I'm going to break it down so we can see what's going on here and see why this is an album that people seem to either love or hate. The opening track is Reckoning Day. The first thing I noticed is that it was a slower paced song, but also an angry song. Dave's vocals sound like they're coming from a personal place. Marty plays some classical riffs in the middle of the song. The bass guitar can be heard up front in the mix. It sounds kind of like thrash, but slower thrash with melodic song structures. Next is Train of Consequences. This sounds like the type of music he was making for those movie soundtracks. It sounds like something that could have been on Countdown to Extinction. Has those machine gun riffing, the guitar melodies they use in the free chorus. Has an awesome bass line. Uh, Nick's drumming is awesome. There's the harmonica. <laughs> it almost sounds like Aerosmith for a minute. And I'll talk about that later. But this was at least as a promotional single in the U.S. and a regular single in other markets. It reached 29 on the U.S. mainstream rock charts. And according to Dave Mustaine, the song's about gambling and the consequences of it. Next is Addicted to Chaos. This might have the best drum intro on any Megadeth song. Another song that sounds like slow thrash, but with lots of melody. Marty has some really awesome uh, lead guitar work on the song. I think the song has a lot of emotion. It's what makes it a good song. I also like the fact that the guitar solo had a little bit of a psychedelic rock tone. Then there was a song, Tout Le Monde. Uh, I may be in a minority. I think the remake with Christina Scabia is better, but it's still a good song. This was one of the few ballads that they've ever done. I think it may be one of the first ballads if you don't count In My Darkest Hour. And I know there were a few more, such as Foreclosure or Dream. But it was the 90s and all metal bands did ballads. Plus, it was released as a single. It made it to 31 on the mainstream rock charts. When the song came out, there was a little bit of controversy because MTV thought it was encouraging people to unalive themselves. But then... Dave Mustaine released a statement saying that it's not about that. It's about when a loved one passes away and you wish you could say something to them before they go. And that's why they have the line, these are my last words, I'll say to you now, you set me free. It's a way of saying goodbye to somebody before they die. At this point in the album, there are some pretty good deep cuts. The next song is Elysian Fields. It's a pretty cool underrated track. It's a darker sound. It has that melodic groove sound that they use on the Countdown to Extinction album. Another song that's not a thrash metal song, I would say more of a heavy metal song, but I like the darker tone of the song. It's another one with those Aerosmith-styled harmonicas, and I never really noticed that before, but I had to look it up, and it's played by another musician, and these are the only two songs that have the harmonica on it, and the, the guy who plays it is Jimmy Wood. He's another musician. After this is Killing Road, Another song with a darker tone and some awesome guitar riffs. It might have some of the best guitar riffs on any song on any album, and maybe uh, the most Megadeth-sounding song on the album. This one has Marty Friedman's best guitar solos, and uh, pretty much maybe one of his best guitar solos of all of his albums. After this is A Lot of Heroes. It was kind of a slower-paced thrash song. It had those angry riffs and awesome melodies with the lead Tar solo is very good. It was the kind of solo that had more melody and not as much as that flashy technical playing that many bands try to do. And now we come to probably their darkest song lyrically. That's Family Tree. The song might not be that heavy. Kind of sounds like a hard rock song. It has this hard driving bass line. But the lyrics are about, let's just say, abuse taking place in a family. I think the song's okay, but to be honest, it's not one of my favorites. If I had to pick a weaker one, this would be it. And then after this is the title track. Another good song because they use those palm muted guitar riffs, but another one of those slower paced songs. Another one I thought was just okay. If I were ranking the tracks, this would also be at the lower end, but it's still pretty good. I'm just saying these last two songs made the album drag a little bit. But now I think we get to the point in the album uh, where there's one of their hidden gems. It is a song, I Thought I Know It All. I really like the song. It has cool foot stomping rhythms, some awesome melodic guitar playing. Dave and Marty really do that twin guitar really good. 
One of the better deep cuts, it's catchy, it's memorable, has great guitar riffs. There are two more songs on the album, and they're called Black Curtain and Victory. Black Curtain is a pretty cool track. It's maybe like one of like the thrashiest tracks on the album. Had a sound that was closer to some of their older albums from the 80s. Although not a very fast-paced song, it still had a little bit of that thrash in it. Victory was a weird song, kind of, I don't know, like a filler track almost. Because Dave Mustaine is like naming a bunch of old Megadeth songs and lyrics. But it's okay. It's decent. I like the bass guitar sound of this one. So now let's take a look at the poll. So this screenshot here, it was put up eight hours after I put up the poll. So only 6% of the people said it was a sellout. They abandoned their sound. So out of 18 votes. So maybe like only like two or three people really didn't like the album. Everyone else was pretty positive. 22%, it was a decent album, not their best, but I still enjoyed it. 17%, it was a good album, if you look at it as a hard rock album. And over half, 56%, said it's an underrated masterpiece, one of their best albums. So I think that this l leads us to believe that over time, this album has aged uh, very well. I think it's one of those albums that wasn't really like a favorite back when it was released but i think out of all of their albums it may have stood the test of time better than a lot of the others i think it's the kind of album they were trying to do something a little different and they did it well so i think the final verdict is that it's an underrated masterpiece so that's all check out my other review of another megadeth album that people really don't like and that's risk and in this video i try to come to its defense i'm not really sure if I'm very convincing of it, but I've always liked Risk. But in the meantime, like this video, helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings, and more. I have merch. I have memberships. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.